Hi again everyone, welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. We're at the National Motor Museum. My name's Mick, I'm one of the curators here. And you're probably wondering why I'm standing in front of a rust bucket. Well, you're right in some ways. This is a 1952 Hartner Pacific and it's actually a very, very significant vehicle. It's an Australian build. Uh, there were two models of Hartnett. There was the Pacific, which was a soft top or tourer, and there was a Tasman, which was a hard top. Uh, only three of these are known to exist. Uh, one of them is out in the wild, uh, roaming the streets of Melbourne, we've been told, and it's been restored fully and in quite a good condition. Uh, the other one is probably in worse condition than this one. Uh, and then we've got our own, which we have great plans to restore, so more on that later on. Now, the name Hartnett is probably familiar to lots of you. Lawrence Hartnett, Sir Lawrence Hartnett, is known to many as the father of the Holden. So he was the managing director of Holden when in 1948 they came out with a 48215, or Holden FX as some of you will know it. Um, and he parted ways with Holden shortly thereafter, not in the best of terms, uh, I'm led to believe. Um, and uh, he decided he would make his own car. So he was actually quite a forward thinking dude. Um, he saw there was a gap in the market for a small uh, family car, something more affordable, or perhaps a second family car. Um, and he went around the world and he eventually uh, came up with the Hartnett Pacific. Um, uh, and so it's an interesting vehicle. In some ways it was very forward thinking, in some ways it was a little bit old school. And just to talk to you about the technical side, uh, I'll throw over to my colleague Matt, who knows a little bit more about it. Here's Matt. G'day Matt, how are you? Good, thanks. Now, the Hartnett's a really Australian story in some ways, and in other ways it's quite an international one, as were lots of cars at the time. Okay, well the backstory to this vehicle is very European. Um, during World War II, when the Germans had occupied France, chap by the name of Jean-Albert Grégoire, who had been working with uh, Aluminium Francaise, which was the French aluminium factories, to look at ways of using aluminium more productively than uh, just pots and pans and things. Obviously, when the war came along, some aluminium was required for aircraft. But during the war, he managed to secretly design uh, various components of the vehicle, and particularly aluminium chassis. After the war had ended, um, the companies that were looking at using the car, including Simca, and we actually have the uh, prototype of the other Hartnett, the Tasman, which was actually a Simca designed by Gregoire. Well, they were looking at using these cars, were using these designs. In the end, mostly they didn't. However, there was a chap in England by the name of Kendall who had become a member of parliament and was keen to build the people's car in England. And he uh, took the Gregoire design, called it the Kendall, looked into getting it produced and started the basis of a production, but unfortunately it fell over for a number of reasons. It appears that Hartnett met Gregoire and Gregoire said to him, well, look, I know that this chap Kendall was trying to build a car based on my design. Go and talk to him and see if you can get all the bits and pieces that you might need. So he went to Kendall and Kendall said, well, yeah, I'm not doing it now and I'll do you a deal and sold him various licenses and proprietary rights. Now, one of the important rights was to get the aluminium chassis made, and these were made in a place called Renshaw in Scotland. Now, Renshaw during the war was building uh, a lot of the components for Spitfires. So after the war, they were out of business. No one needed a fighter aircraft. There was plenty available. So they quickly took on the idea of building aluminium chassis uh, for Hartnett, and that worked quite well. Unfortunately for Hartnett, his problems actually occurred in Australia because other bits, including the engines, came from England. But the bits that came from Australia, particularly the body panels, were needed to be pressed by Commonwealth Engineering. And unfortunately for him, they didn't live up to the promise of what they were intending to do. Because the backstory to that was that the Australian government was very keen to get manufacturing going in Australia and very keen to assist where they could, as they had done with Hartnett when he was starting on the 48215 hold. Unfortunately, that keenness didn't really fall out, come over to the Hartnett and um, Commonwealth Engineering wasn't able to supply the body panels as per their contract. And that caused ultimately Hartnett's demise because he just couldn't produce the cars in order to sell them. And without having cars to show people, it was a flawed activity. So. That's the backstory to the Hartnett. Uh, it's uh, it's very interesting and a quite a simple car though. Shall we uh, have a look under the bonnet with Nigel? Sure, I'm sure Nigel will be able to give you a guided tour. So Nigel. Hey Mick, how are you? Good. What's under the bonnet of this? Well, what's underneath the bonnet of this is a Aspen flat twin, basically like a motorbike engine, uh, associated with Douglas Rudd 
uh, Raj, sorry, uh, 594 cc's of rubber burning grunt. That's what it's got. Um, and that's really about all there is to see. There's not an awful lot here, so. But we're very fortunate with this car. It's, um, everything seems to be here. Everything seems to be working to a point, especially with the engine and the gearbox and the drive line. Um, so yes, it makes it a very ideal restoration candidate, this one, so. Well, it's, surely it's in too rough a condition to take her for a drive, right? Mm, maybe. I think maybe we could give it a go. Right. I don't believe it. You've even got this running. I believe it, we got it going. So, for a 1940s designed small family car, even when it's restored, it's not really going to be a performance machine. But you can definitely see a, a young Australian family having a, a fun weekend in this. It's a four seater. Simple dash, very in keeping colour with the 1950s, but plenty of work to do. Plenty of work to do. And um, Nigel, you did service the brakes before we uh, started it up, didn't you? Roger. But the horn worked. So that was all a bit of fun and I hope you enjoyed watching that, but on a serious note, the Hutton is a very, very significant vehicle. Uh, there are none on public display in the country and very few of them left in the world. Um, so uh, this is more or less the condition it came to the museum in a very, very long time ago. Uh, but we do have great plans to restore it to uh, more or less what it looked like when it was touring around the country as a show car for the fledgling Hartnett factory. Um, we are running a public fundraiser and there's a link just below uh, where you can read a little bit more about that. And if you feel inclined to donate to the efforts, that would be very well received. We do hope to have the Hartnett on the floor of the museum in great shape for everyone to see pretty soon. Thanks for watching.